Well, the 1st of March, and we're greeted by, at last, some glorious sunshine. Hopefully, the bad weather, especially the high winds, have all gone now. If, like me, you did batten the hatches down with the high winds we've had, I actually zip-tied this auto vent here. With the sunshine now, this will be expanding and trying to open. So if you have done it, remember to move any cable ties already opened. Just quickly show you these shallots, yellow moon. Now these are sown on the 8th of February, so they've been in around about three weeks, and there doesn't look much growth on at the moment. There's the odd one or two shoots popping up. But what they've been doing is actually producing roots, and if you look onto the surface here, you can see those white things, and they're actually going down. Once they've got the roots established, they'll be start firing up a few leaves. These are the Hatif de Noir, the ones that I planted quite a while ago. As you can see, they got some really good foliage coming up on them now. Weather permitting, I'll be popping those out within the next two or three weeks. As we move into March now, it's noticeable that the daylight hours are extending quite a lot. Wherever you're located in the country though, you do need to keep a watch. Here in the Midlands, there's still a risk for the next probably five weeks or so that we could get another frost. However, for me, I'm going to be starting sowing my tomatoes. I'm going to be sowing four varieties to begin with. The first one is the Sweet Million. That's probably my favourite cherry tomato of all time. Gives a good crop, plenty of fruit on each truss. Moving across then, we've got the Tumbler. That there is my outdoor variety that'll be going in a couple of hanging baskets. And the new one here for me, that's one called Soderno. Another cherry tomato, but I'll be trying that in a few pots. And last but not least, the start of the show is my old favourite, the Crimson Crush. I think this is about the fifth or sixth year I've grown this, and say it does stand up to the elements and also any disease going around. I should be starting the seeds off in the Agrolan root trainers. So these do provide a good start for the tomatoes. Well, any seeds really, because they provide a good chance for the roots to grow deep. And also there's very little disturbance when you take them out ready for potting on. The compost I'm using here is Bathgate's multi-purpose compost. I have sieved it and I've also added a bit of vermiculite. And before I start sowing, I'm going to give the surface of the compost a little spray just to make it sure it's damp when the seeds make contact with it. And there we have it. Now on this occasion, I'm going to be using the lid. When I used the lid on these plug plant trainers before, I didn't actually use the lid to create the sowing station depressions. Um, I am aware of the lid because I've used it for a few years now but the reason I didn't use it last time I was actually multi-sowing the stations and I didn't want the seeds to touch. When you put these depressions in with the lid it actually forms a cone which would cause the seeds to drop together. So single sowing now that's okay to use it like that. I'm just giving these a soak from the bottom. I'll just run you through. The first four rows are Crimson Crush, so that's 28. The next one, row number five, a Soderno. The next one, number six, is Tumbler, and bringing up the rear in number seven is the Sweet Million. So I'll give these a good soaking from the bottom, then they'll go into the propagator, around about 18 degrees to get them to germinate. I'll just give you a look into the Vitapod with the grow lights. And as you can see, with the extra bottom heat and the additional lighting, these peppers have certainly come on quite a lot. Nice and stocky. I've actually lowered the temperature now. I think the bottom heat on here now is set at about 16 and the lights are on uh, 10 hours a day. 
The brass gizzard that was sound a few days ago, despite the intervention of the mouse, them actually started popping their heads up. I'll say I'll give them another two or three days, see what else comes up, and then I'll be moving them out into the cold greenhouse. There are a few more onions there. They're actually doing quite well, but the celery don't look too good. I might have to re sow that. So the mouse did dig into that as well. Continuing on with the plug plant trainer sowing, I've prepared another two here, and these are going to be for the banana shallots. One will be for the long red Florence, and the other one will be for the Zebrun. And as usual, I'll be doing one cell per station here. I prefer to do that because as the plant grows, it's far easier to pop them on with less root disturbance. And this set here is all my uh, banana shallot seeds. As you can see, I do like them. They do provide a very good return, these do, and they also have the store very well over the winter months. In fact, I've still probably got about 8 to 10 left. You can actually sow these uh, multi sow in a trade to 3 or 4 seeds, plant them out and they will muscle themselves out and grow. Not quite as big, but even so, it is a good way of sowing them. Anyway, I'm going to prepare these, give them a spray in, and sow just like I did the tomatoes earlier. With the long red florins, I've actually sown these multi cell a few of them. I was coming quite near to the end of the pocket and rather just stored about half a dozen seeds. I popped, doubled up in some of the cells. Another thing worth mentioning with these Agrilan plug plant trainers is that they're stackable. And the height of these two fit just nicely into the Vitapod with a double layer on does save quite a lot of space. Within the space of five minutes, the sun has disappeared. We've had a short shower and it's like icy rain coming down the temperatures dropped by about 10 degrees it's, it's freezing cold again and um, one thing i forgot to do there was two things actually i haven't sown any spring onions yet so i'm going to do a few of my trusty favorites the old ramrod i've just got a 12 cell tray here i'm just going to do a, a depression with my thumbnail in we go i'll do Plenty of seeds in here. A nice little pinch, eight to ten seeds. Drop them in. So you can pop these straight into the ground or wherever you're going to put them. I might put these in the the uh, veggie pot actually to start them off with. And uh, so I plant these out as a block, and you can pick them just like you do out of the supermarket. Only a lot fresher and much cheaper. In the end I sold another tray and that one is the other popular one called White Lisbon. These will go into the propagator now at about 16 degrees. To finish today's sowing off I'm going to be doing a few lettuce. On the left we've got the old cleaf, the smile, the green one. Next to that we've got Lolo, there's the Rosso and the Biondi, the green one. Next to that we've got the Oak Leaf and Navara, red one. And to bring it up on the end there is the Little Gem. Just sow a few of each in a little pot and then I'll prick them out a bit later once I've germinated. To reduce the risk of this running to an epic, <laughs> I'm going to call it quits after sowing these lettuce. With the temperature dropping, it's actually done a favour with these sowing lettuce. Because lettuce don't like it too hot for germination. In fact, I think something like 15 degrees rings a bell where it's reluctant to germinate anything higher than that. Normally I'll grow Lolo Rosso and Lolo Biondi, which is the, the green version. But uh, Browns have issued a seed packet which you've got mixed seed in which is saves me doing two sowings. This is the final sowing of the oak leaf 
and the dark seed, this one is unusual. I'll give these now a little top dressing of uh, Miculite and then put them in the propagator. But say that will be a down to about 12, I think the propagator set the little one. Just the briefest of coverings you want. So that's about it. The uh, lettuce are in the water bath, having a little soak before I put them into the propagator. That's about it for the sound for today. We've covered quite a lot actually, and uh, we've had a bit of all weathers. Started off nice, and it's gone cold now. It's still teeming down and rain. The temperatures dropped remarkably, so uh, I'm not going to do any more. Still got plenty more seeds to sow in things like cucumbers and that, but I'm going to hang fire just to let the weather warm up. Although I've got propagators. I'm struggling for space a bit, so I could do with moving stuff out. Before I go, I'd like to say a special thank you to each and every one of you, because a couple of days ago I had a notification that I'd reached 15,000 subscribers on uh, YouTube, and now that's a massive milestone for me. So many thanks to each and every one of you. Much appreciated. Without you lot, there'd be no YouTube channel for me. Right, until next time, many thanks for watching. See you later. Take care all. Bye for now.